Thank you for joining us this Sunday night. I'm Amanda Starantino. It was 14 weeks later than planned and no fans in the stands. But 33 drivers still lined up for the green flag today. The Indianapolis 500 once again had its share of drama. Day first and Brad Brown start our team coverage of race day from inside the Speedway. A most unusual race day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but it was all done. They ran well, they ran, ran most of the 200 laps. They finished 200 They laps. finished 200 they laps. Finished 200. That's all that matters. <laughs> Heck, most races, they finished 101. I know. Done, so. Well, we're happy with that. But at the end, there's a wreath in the milk and kissing the bricks for Takuma Sato, the second time in four years, the Indy 500 champ, Brad Brown. Dave, first year with you. The first thing I want to ask you about is just, you had a chance to be in it yeah. for this race for so many years, to be in it empty today. Yeah. There was just a certain different feeling. We knew it would be, but how was it when the race got I, going down? I there? got stuff up on Twitter and, and Facebook, some shots that I took from the front of the grid, and there was only a crewman per car, drivers in, and then you look around and no one in the stands. Here come the Thunderbirds, which were awesome. Fantastic. But I'm thinking, Man, it'd be cool, 300,000 people here to see that. Uh, Jim Cornelison singing. The sound's literally bouncing off the empty grandstands here. It's just, hey, it, it is what it is, yeah. but it, it sucked. I know, you know? kind of, yeah, it just did not have, this wasn't the race day that we all kind of groaned and know and love. Right, right. Kind of like that. But, but once you fire up the engines, mm -hmm. Literally full speed ahead. That's it, time to go. Fire up the engines, let's do it. The new boss in charge got us started here on race day. We'll be back home in Indiana in 2021. We sit and have fun. Roger Penske giving the command to start engines for the first time. Now chairman of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. A cool moment at the front of the field. Mario Andretti driving the two-seater. Michael Andretti in the back seat. Marco Andretti starting on pole position. But when the green flag dropped, it was clear that Scott Dixon had maybe the best car of the day. Turn one, lap one. Dixon went to the lead and would dominate the first part of the race. First big wreck came on lap 93 on a restart. Connor Daly and Oliver Askew getting caught up in one another coming out of turn four. A messy wreck down there. Askew walked away with a bit of an injury to his knee. Daly's day was done early. Lap 103, Alexander Rossi starts to make his bid for best of the day, taking the lead over Dixon just past the halfway point. But a strange day for Rossi after that. Coming out of the pits makes Connor Contact with Takuma Sato. A penalty would move Rossi back to 23rd, making his way back through the field. But then this wreck on lap 144 put him in the wall, and a strong contender's day was done early. Move ahead in action to lap 158. Dixon continued to dominate, but here comes Takuma Sato making a pass on the front stretch to the inside and to the lead. Sato's car is very best of the day at that juncture. Those two would battle back and forth for 35 laps. And then on lap number 194, six to go. Spencer Piggott with this nasty accident into the wall in turn four would T-bone the safety barrier on the top of the pit lane attenuator. That brought out a final yellow flag. IndyCar was unable to make final repairs to that pit safety barrier. And so the race would finish under caution. Sato, just ahead of Scott Dixon and Graham Rahal, his second Indy 500 championship. And another win for the Rahal Letterman Lanigan Racing Team. When we started with you earlier this morning, you talked a lot about the team. What is it like to share this experience with the 30 guys, as you've said, to, to get this done today? Amazing. Simply amazing organization. You know, the 30 boys, no doubt about, but the entire Ray Hall, Tamman Landing and Racing, you know. I mean, Graham had a great shot too. I mean, I know he's not happy because I won't, but um, as a teammate, you know, he's such a great guy. When you pass Scott on lap 158 for the lead, tell me about that battle over the next 35 laps with him in your rearview mirror the whole time. Yeah, that's good actually. It's so cool because um, actually Scott was everyone's target entire weeks. You know, he, he, he looked strong in the practice. He looked obviously very strong in, in qualifying. In fact, he was the most trimmed guy to be able to go in that speed with that trimmed car. Probably I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> um, but I think we strategically working for how can we be consistent, and that is the key. The first one here for you had a very distinct feeling in getting that Indy win finally. How does this second one feel a couple hours afterwards now that you've had a chance to soak it in a bit? Still unbelievable. Still honestly speechless how lucky I am. 
I'm obviously a fast one. I was just all, all, all I could was shouting, right? Neither of the English or the Japanese came out of my mouth. But today, I was a little more calm and thanking to the team. Um, but what an unbelievable moment. I was full of tears in the car and uh, it was just so emotional. You know, it, it, it was obviously a pity to I couldn't share with the fans here, 300,000 people. But I know the millions of people really hope, you know, they enjoyed the race. And um, no, this is a, a, what an amazing moment. I'm so lucky that, uh, you know, Bobby and Mike Lanningham and uh, David Letterman gave me so much opportunity. One of the veterans gets it done today, and I'll tell you, as, as many great champions as we've had around here, Takuma Sato is a guy, I think, who appreciates yeah. what this means as much as anyone. Yeah, he loves this place yeah. and, and has loved it. And uh, No attack, no chance. That's his motto. And he went for it once again. I can only imagine, though, tonight, Saki and Sato. That's, <laughs> that's the formula for success, wherever uh -huh. they are. That sounds good to us, indeed. <laughs> it does. Right. Uh, it's been a pleasure bringing you all the coverage here over the course of the last 12 days that uh, you couldn't be here, but we could. Uh, thanks for sharing the time here. And uh, hey, listen, awesome. by next May, let's hope this all pans out and we can uh, invite some friends to the 105th party. 105th Indianapolis 500. Yeah, I got a bunch of friends that would like to show up yeah, next year. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be here for it. For day first, I'm Brad Brown at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, WRTV Trackside. We'll see you soon.